for the last 20 years, I've been making predominantly electronic music. My biggest way of working, I guess, has been about turning sound into music. I started off making music just with things that were around the house. As my sort of imagination expanded, I started to travel, then I started to record more extraordinary noises. But there weren't really even any sequences. It's very hard to manipulate and record sounds. We've got the opposite problem now, really, which is anything and everything is possible. And we've got every tool we could possibly want. So it then becomes about the ideas. So here I am at the farm, and this is the beginning of my big record. One of the uh, records uh, I did a couple of years ago was made out of a pig. I was there for the birth and then went up and visited it every couple of weeks. For the last however many years, just been spent, it feels like, on my hands and knees in dark corners. I went down the sewers underneath Fleet Street, recorded the sounds of pretty ugly and dark things. I like the real challenges of going out into the world, getting out of the studio. I think studios become far too comfortable and safe. For me, part of what being a musician is telling stories about what's going on in the world. Village Underground is the first show that I've done for a while without a drummer or a percussionist. And one of the things that it allows you to do is it allows us to take samples and then drop them immediately into time and into rhythm with the backing track. So one of the things that you want to do for the audience is hopefully is to try and just demonstrate a little bit of how anything can be music really, including them. I'm trying to think of ways to reach that divide. So I was like, well, let's go fishing. Let's find the longest boom pole that we can put a mic on the end of it and then go out into the audience and fetch sounds. The first problem was finding a pole long enough and the first thing I did was I found a 40 foot fishing rod. Of course I hadn't done any kind of research on that at all. The biggest problem though really is it's just unwieldy. Uh, we nearly scrapped the idea just because it was so clumsy. Also you don't want to lose the momentum as well, you know what I mean? You want the show to continue on. I'm missing a seagull, you can scare them off. So we're going to try it for the first time on Tuesday and hope that it works. The first thing we want to do is to get them to make the kick drum because really the whole show is based around 10,000 kick drums. And then I'm trying to imitate what's on the record so we'll ask people to whistle and want some sort of textural stuff, hiss, tape hiss kind of quality to it. Ultimately, it's about the audience providing the backing track for the singer and for us to do the song. The challenge for us is to get enough of a clear harmonic sense as a bass for Rahel to be able to sing over the top of. We've done like two rehearsals, <laughs> but I think we're all we're together with it, and that's the Herbert way. You know, everything that's happening is a little bit raw and thrown together and you never really know what to expect. It's not a traditional gig. Thank you. It's a little worried that it's going to sound terrible, but you know, that's what people want from a live show. They want to feel like it's in the moment. It could only happen that night and you had to have been there to have heard and understood everything that was going on. So that's actually a microphone. We're going fishing for noises. This is where you come in. I feel okay with the risk involved, as long as it's done for the right reasons. Also, just the sound of, you know, four or five hundred people whistling, but not a sound that I particularly heard in a nightclub before. One, two, three, stop. Really, a live show is a magic trick. You need to do enough to be able to still perform a show, even if it's right on the edge of what's possible. Swim a length and dive in, drying hair cows. You, my love. You, my love. You, my love. You, my love. Music serves all sorts of incredible functions and bridges all sorts of divides. And yet music has become a sort of disposable commodity. No one really thinks it can change the world anymore. But of course technology has a way of piercing those bubbles and just 
throwing up completely absurd new proposals. And so there will always be great music. Yeah, I think music should reclaim its power to poke us in the chest. Yeah.